Here in the States, uh, we have, are we required to have um, fire drills in our schools frequently. And usually it's once a month. Other agencies and other places may require it more often. Um, but typically speaking, once a month in any school setting, um, and that includes public or private or whatever. Um, but one fun thing that you can do is when you're introducing or you're just starting out with fire drills in your classroom, since they only happen once a month, your kids, it takes a while for them to kind of get into it because you get into the groove, I should say, not into it like they like it. Nobody likes fire drills, but um, it takes them a little while to get comfortable with the idea. So one of the things you can do is take them on um, a fire safety scavenger hunt around your building because there should be a number of elements in place um, relating to fire safety and so you just give them you can shrink this down to half page if you like or you can just print it out as is put it on a clipboard give the kids some crayons and as they go around the building you probably want to take them like you would anywhere in the hallway and point out some of these things they can mark on their page and now they can scribble it out exit out whatever you want um, now some of you may live in a place where there are there's no hydrant it just really depends where you're located. But if there isn't something like that, it's a great learning opportunity. You can say, well, we went all around the building and we never saw a hydrant. You know, I wonder why that is. And so you can talk about it. it this is a great way to develop vocabulary, um, smoke detector, fire alarm, fire extinguisher, exit sign, sprinkler. Um, so yeah, this is a great free printable that you can use to take a scavenger hunt fire safety scavenger hunt with your kids. Tom will drop a link to that printable in the comments for you below. Okay, Angel says we had a fire drill today and the kids did great. That's awesome, Angel. That is awesome. Yes, it's always a huge relief when fire drills go really well because they're little kids. <laughs> and you never know what could happen, right? So yeah, I'm so happy for you. Um, Kate says we're having the firefighters visit our school. That's always a good one. My only problem with that is that sometimes if there is indeed an emergency, then sometimes they can't come and it, I, I try not to prepare the kids too far in advance because I've had one too many times when they couldn't make it due to an emergency and the kids were like heartbroken. Like they could not get over that the firefighters didn't show up. <laughs> and I was like, well, there was a fire. They had to, they had to put out the fire. <laughs> um, so bingo, who likes to play bingo in their class? Sometimes on Fridays we have fun Fridays and um, other times when we have substitutes, I love to leave bingo for a sub because once my kids do it, do bingo with me and we've done it a couple times, they know that we play it frequently, then it's a great activity to leave for a sub. So I have free bingo games for many different themes over in pre-K pages. I don't know if you knew that or not, but Tom will drop a link to the free bingo, uh, fire safety or fire prevention bingo. And these bingo games are a great way to work on vocabulary. So it has things like, um, not just the fire truck and the fire alarm, um, but it has the hydrant, the axe, um, the hose, the ladder, the mask. That's one thing my kids were always afraid of was the mask. When the firefighters would come to school and they had the mask on, they would get really scared. And it's good to talk about those things. So anyway, bingo is a great way to infuse and get a little bit more vocabulary into your classroom. Um, let's see. Yay. Claire says she used the bingo with her ELL students. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Carrie says the firefighters are coming to her school tomorrow and now she's afraid that they'll have an emergency. Maybe that was just my particular fire department and they were super busy. I don't know. Um, maybe larger fire departments have more crews. I don't know how it works, but we did have that happen a couple times and my kids were devastated because we put it in the newsletter and the kids were so excited. We had one little guy wore his little pretend firefighter costume and then it was like, <laughs> sorry guys. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, Cynthia said, Fire Prevention Week is always the week of the 1871 Chicago Fire. That's a great, great piece of trivia. Thank you. October 8th. That's fantastic. You learn something new every day, I swear. I always thought it was because we changed our time around that time, and then they t tell you to change the smoke detector, too. 
good, good, good information. Um, we have, Bobby says, we have the BIT kit that is still offered. It comes with the DVD. I'm not familiar with that. Um, okay, so anyway, Fire Safety Bingo freebie. That's the first one. Fire Safe Safety Scavenger Hunt freebie, but I'm not done yet. <laughs> um, of course, I've built up these freebies for different themes over the years. Um, this, these are Play-Doh counting mats. So I have these for free as well for a lot of different themes that you might teach in your classroom. So again, you can print these out. You can print them two to a page if you want them to be smaller, but they're designed to be used with Play-Doh. Um, I have them with the little fire icons and without. So this is, a, this is a 10 frame and the kids can roll snakes, if you will, of Play-Doh and fill in the numeral. And then they can roll balls of orange or red Play-Doh and put them here on the 10 frame and then count one, two. Um, and I have them up to 10. And I have them with and without the little fire icons because some kids need that support and some don't. Um, so fire safety counting mats. So that's three freebies, right? I also have a bunch of books. We have a book list, a fire prevention or fire safety book list over at Pre-K Pages. And Tom will drop a link to you, uh, for you, sorry, in the comments below. I also pulled these books out of my stash this one, I do not know if this is in print. I can't stand when people show me books that are out of print. But if you can get your hands on a copy of this, it's highly worth it. I do believe it's on YouTube as well. It's a scholastic book, sing and read storybook called Fire Truck. And if they still make it and they have it in the scholastic catalog, grab yourself a few copies. You're going to want them. If there was ever a song that stuck in my head for a really long period of time, so think Baby Shark, right? It's this song. Kids love it. It's almost like We Will Rock You by Queen, but only for fire safety. <laughs> fire truck, fire truck. I want to ride on a fire truck. And oh my goodness, the, my kids would, they sang this past Christmas, past Valentine's Day. It was like, oh boy, every year without fail. There's a song that goes with it too. It says there's a CD inside. I don't know if they still come with CDs, but there's my CD. And I totally, you know, ripped it and put it on my, um, my device so that I could play it in the classroom. And it even has the music. If you're a musical, there's music in the back. And kids love this book. It's I'm telling you. Mm -mm. Let me know in the comments below. If, oh no, it says Debbie, I'm seeing it in my head right now. Have you, You've heard it before, right? I think we've talked about this. Um, who is the author? Asks Angel. Ivan Ulz. U-L-Z. I know, it's an inter interesting last name. Ivan Ulz. U-L-Z. And it's a scholastic book. So look in the catalog. I do not know if they have it right now. Um, they you might have already done your I always order like a month as soon as I can because then otherwise books go out of stock so I don't know if you've already ordered but um, but also look for it out of print or um, on resale candy says oh yes found it online it is awesome I just I don't know what it's just like kids love it so much and most of these others are also from Scholastic and I don't know if they still have them or not but they're in my stash here the Fire, uh, Fire, Fire Engine Man by Andrea Zimmerman and David Clementia. And um, they, they always have a lot of really good books in Scholastic. Um, so yeah, very vibrant um, illustrations. And these are all about little kids, boys and girls, who are wanting to be firefighters or learning about fire safety in some way. Um, I need that DVD, says Regina. I love the book. Had to get it from Amazon. Look on YouTube too, Regina, because that you can get the song from there. Um, the Wonky Donkey, yes. The Wonky Donkey is going crazy here in the US right now because of that viral UK video. Everyone wants a copy of Wonky Donkey, me included. <laughs> Fire Bears, the rescue team. So this kind of familiarizes kids with what firefighters do, only they're cute little bears. 
And again, the photos, uh, I mean, the illustrations are just great. This one rhymes, racing, rushing to the scene, fire bears, the rescue team, Poplar Street, store ablaze, bears push through a smoky haze. So I love anytime I can read a rhyming book and also um, teach something to my kids, you know, in addition to the rhyme, that's great. So, um, <laughs> yes. Firefighter Ted, I love this one. It's so simple, but kids love it. Sometimes simpler is better. Firefighter Ted, right? Um, the illustrations, I should say, are simple. Um, it's very cute. But there is usually a large selection of these in your Scholastic catalog. Oh, this is a good one. I love this one. Gingerbread Man Loose on the Fire Truck. So this is a version of the gingerbread man only when he's on the fire truck. I love this book. <laughs> um, I was reading it before I got on just to make sure I remember correctly. Oh, and I love how they've labeled. Do you see how they've labeled the firefighter there? That's a great way to introduce labeling to your kids and talk about all the different things. Um, I'm trying to find the page where he says his little, I'll run and I'll dodge as fast as I can. I'm not a dog bone. I'm the gingerbread man. And it, there's, there was a little scene with the dog before that. <laughs> but very cute. So it's, if you've read the gingerbread man to your class, this is a good one um, to also talk about fire safety or firefighters in general, just to introduce the topic. This one by Anne Rockwell is pretty much a classic, I think. At the Firehouse by Anne um, Rockwell. And again, Scholastic book. All of my fire safety books come from Scholastic. They always have a really good selection over there. This one also has labels. So I this would just lend itself really well to a labeling activity. You could um, draw a very simple picture of a fire truck on some butcher paper. And then you can talk about labeling and you have the kids help you label it. Yeah, so that's a great one too. So I could just go on with the books. I have I have an entire bin full. <laughs> okay. Lisa says my kiddos love this one. Yes. They really I think all kids enjoy the fire safety theme because we're making something that could be scary to them more approachable, more understandable. We're breaking it down and making it very relatable so it's not just some big scary thing. Um, then we have my um, fire drill routine packet here and I printed out the table of contents so I could tell you exactly what was inside but this is really good if you want to introduce your kids to how a fire drill works so it has the visuals that they need and I find that just telling them you're gonna hear a loud noise you're gonna see some lights flash it's gonna be loud telling them about it isn't as effective as kind of walking them through what's actually going to happen. <laughs> so this one is called I am ready for a fire drill and the thing about uh, this visual routine kit, this fire, fire safety, is that it's completely editable which means that you can edit the text to meet your needs. So if you teach in another language, if you use different words or terms, if you need to use British spelling or different spelling versions, then by all means, you can just open it in Adobe Reader, type your own words in, right? So that's the beauty of this. So this is, I am ready for a fire drill. I have it in full page. If you wanted to read it to a whole group, I have it in this small version that I'm showing you right now. And I also have it in black and white so that after you do your first fire drill or after your first couple of fire drills, you can have the kids take their own version home to talk about with their parents. Um, it says fire drills are practice in case of an emergency. And I usually tell the kids that just like we practice, we're practicing how to line up, we're practicing our letters every day, we're practicing how to write our names. We also have to practice what to do in case of an emergency, and in this case, a fire emergency. 
So fire drills are practice in case of a real fire. When it's time for a fire drill, the alarm makes a loud noise and the bright light flashes. Usually at this point, we'll talk about that and I will ring a loud bell or something really loud and I, I will show them that yes, it is loud, but it's only to keep us safe and we shouldn't cry because that's what <laughs> some of them will do. When they hear that really loud noise and see those flashing lights, some of them will cry. And some of them will want to hide. There's always a hider <laughs> every year. It says, I'm not scared of the fire of the fire alarm because my teacher is there to keep me safe. So I let them know that my job is to keep them safe. And in this, um, in this packet, the teacher comes in different um, sexes and different skin tones. So if you're a male teacher, we've got male teachers, female teachers in different skin tones. I, I love how she's wearing a dress though. I'm like, has she not ever taught preschool before? <laughs> um, when I hear or see the fire alarm, I line up quickly and we emphasize the quickly because we're timed on how quickly we get out of the building. Um, the firefighters, that's, that's a thing. Um, and it's really difficult to get lots of little children out the door quickly. I really feel badly for um, the infant teachers though, because they often have to wheel out cribs and that's, that's, that's a lot. Um, when I hear or see the fire alarm, I can line up quickly. Then I follow my teacher outside. And it's really important to emphasize the outside because sometimes they want to hide in the bathroom or something like that. I can wait quietly outside until it's time to go inside. And that's another thing too, like at our school, I don't know about yours, but we had to be silent outside because there were a lot of radios going back and forth, a lot of walkie talkies or whatever. And I, I'm not really certain why we had to have complete silence, but we did. And in case there was any shouting, I guess, inside the building, I'm just making a guess. I could be wrong. But it's difficult for little children to be quiet. And then we go outside and sometimes, depending on where my room was located, we would go outside to the playground. So what do you, what do you think they want to do when they go out there? They want to play. And we have to explain to them, that, well, if this, this is practice for a real fire, and if it were a real fire, you couldn't go off and play because we would need to have you here to count you and make sure that you were safe. So... And then after the fire drill is over, I can follow my teacher inside. Another key point, <laughs> many a child has been left outside after a fire drill. Uh, not, not mine, just in general. I am ready for a fire drill. And then of course, all my books say the end on the back. So that's the, the gist of the books in the packet. Um, yeah. <laughs> Angel's so fast. She said, I ordered the gingerbread story in the fire truck book. Um, <laughs> would you have the kids make a map at home of their meeting place and bring it to show their friends? Uh, it's something you could do if you want. It's something that I've, I've told parents about, but I've never asked to see it. Um, table of contents. So for the fire uh, safety visual packet there, the uh, visual picture packet, there's... Um, posters. So if you prefer a poster, a single page poster, um, and again, they come um, with editable text so that you can type your own words. There, there's cards. I like to take the cards with me on, the, uh, on a fire drill or to a fire drill or whatever, however you do that. Um, so I always had to have a clipboard with all the kids' names. Um, it was just required to have a physical thing uh, with their names on that on it, so your class list basically, and then I would put the cards that I used, and I would have to use those cards sometimes with individual kids to remind them of how fire drill worked outside. So there's cards, there's the little reader that I showed you that also comes, and all of this comes in black and white as well, and then there's the large page uh, books, black and white and um, color as well. So lots of options for choosing there. We also have um, a video list. So if you like to show YouTube videos in your class or use YouTube in any way for teaching, then we have a list of fire safety videos that you can take a peek at. Actually, fire truck might be on that list. I'm not sure. And then, um, then we have all of our blog posts that we've 
we've done about fire safety over the years, as well as a literacy and a math packet. And those are to teach your children foundational skills, but using the fire safety theme to do that. So um, <laughs> thank you for this, Angel says. I've used that fire drill packet. That's great, Angel. Well, that explains why your kids did so well. The fire drill. Well, hello. <laughs> um, but yes, we have a fire safety math and a fire safety literacy packet, and those help your students build those foundational skills um, using the theme. So for example, in the literacy packet, we would have phonological awareness skills. We would have um, things like alphabet identification games, uh, rhyming, syllables, all of that. And then the math uh, packet has things like one-to-one -one correspondence, um, counting, numeral ID, things like that. So we also have those two resources as well, and Tom will drop a link to those in the, if he hasn't already in the comments below. So those are the freebies. I guess I should put them all into an email and send them out to folks so they know I have all these fire safety freebies. So just to recap, we've got the um, zero to 10 um, fire safety Play-Doh counting mats. That's a free printable at Pre-K Pages. I also have those for all the different themes. We've got the Fire Safety Bingo. It's a free printable. I do bingo only in small groups though, so there's not like 20 cards. I think there's like six. So I don't do it with groups larger than that, but you know what, with little kids, you can copy the, you can print off the same boards and have two kids get bingo. I mean, it doesn't, they don't care. <laughs> and then, um, my fire safety scavenger hunt is another free printable there and definitely check out the book list too there's a book list of all my favorite fire safety books that you can check out as well i hope that um <laughs> i hope that you got some ideas that you can take back and use in your classroom right away to help make teaching about uh, fire prevention and fire safety a little easier for you. That's always my goal here at Pre-K Pre Pages, to help teachers teach better, save time, and live more. I'm Vanessa Levin from Pre-K Pages. I wanna thank everyone for tuning in tonight. And until next time, uh, have a great night. I'll see you next week. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.